Hey everyone, Mr. Voikin here, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at a switch diode circuit, and I will construct that in Tinkercad following the schematic diagram to the right, and you can also follow along in Tinkercad and build it on an actual breadboard once you are given all the components. So let's just begin by uh, sliding down all of our components list here. We'll go bring in a breadboard and a battery. R will rotate that over to the side. Usually come in on the left. On the top you can see that's the positive rail. Uh, and we're going to connect that up to positive and change the color to red. And I will uh, also put in a couple jumpers. This one is not actually necessary in Tinkercad, but your breadboard might need it. And there we go. So I've now got all my positive rails connected. And that coincides on the drawing with my input right there, which is from the battery and going all the way along there up to my symbol indicating that that is the V plus rail. Now the ground one, normally we would want to sort of take it down to the ground rail and we'd want that to be black in color. Um, but you should have a power switch into any circuit that you build along with a protection diode. So I'm just gonna bring this into our circuit right here. Okay, our goal is to get it down to this rail right here, in which case, again, I'll put in some jumper wires so that we have access to the rail on the top portion of the breadboard and the bottom portion of the breadboard. Now, uh, the, the rails on the breadboard would coincide with this line down here. However, like I said, the input from the battery right there we need to bring down through a switch and through a diode first all right so let's go find the switch it should be up near the top here in the input section so there are two switches that we can see we've got a push button and we have a slide switch so the difference between these two circuits is that the push button is what we call momentary which means when you press the button you need to hold it in order for it to stay in the closed position and closed means that uh, the uh, terminals inside are connected and current can flow through and when I release my finger, uh, it now goes into the open position and current will stop. It cannot get through any longer. Now with the slide switch, we would actually take that switch and we would slide the switch to one side or the other. And it's called a latching switch, which means when I move the switch over, it's going to stay in that position until I physically move it back. Now a latching switch can come in the form of a push button as well, but with Tinkercad, uh, the one that we're given is this slide switch. Now, let's take the slide switch and put it into our circuit. So you can see that one leg is common and the other leg is called terminal one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the switch down and where it's coming in right there, I'm going to connect the in from the battery to the common lead, okay? Now, right now it's in the off position, it's over on this side, and when I slide it over, it'll connect these two leads. So right now it's off, we've put our switch in. Oopsies. So what are we up to next? Our diode. So we need to go find the diode and there's two types right here, the Zener diode and the other one that just says diode, we want the diode. Now the stripe that's on that diode is the negative leg and on our uh, diagram up above, you can see that that is negative and that is positive. So the line on the diode schematic symbol is negative and it is connected to the switch so this would be the wrong way around so i'm going to press r to rotate that and place that connected to that leg right here called terminal two it goes into the diode down to the ground rail and now we essentially have that 
portion of our uh, circuit complete. Now the rest of it is very similar to what we, well not just very similar, exactly the same as what we did in uh, the first breadboarding lab except that we're adding in this momentary switch. Okay, now it says that we need to calculate the resistance value. So again, that will be done using Ohm's law. So for R1, um, it's going to be working with a red LED, which has a forward voltage drop of 1.8 volts. So we're going to go 9 minus 1.8 and we'll divide it by 0 0.03. Um, now that's what we could use on our our breadboard in uh, that we use in class as I told you we can uh, go up to uh, 0 0.03 amps and then take the resistor value that is a little bit higher than the calculation which should bring it down between 0 0.02 and 0 0.03 however you'll find that Tinkercad uh, sets the limit at 0.02, and if you go anything where above that, they will give you a warning. Okay, but we will use the one that says 0.03 here right now, and if we do this calculation, uh, that uh, equals um, 240 ohms. Now, the resistor, the common resistor value that you will find uh, below that is going to be 220R and above that would be 270R. So again, we're not going to use the 220 and we will opt for the 270. So I'm going to start off with our LED. So I'll go find an LED right here and we will bring that into our circuit. And you can see that the positive leg is brought up to uh, the red positive rail right there. And the negative side of the LED is through a 270 ohm resistor. So I'm going to take the 270 ohm resistor, wherever the resistors are, right there. I'm going to rotate it. Okay, and I will place it right there, uh, sorry, right there, okay, and now current is connected here, this one is connected to the negative leg, it looks like they're, they're sort of overlapping, but they do connect, I could put it down here, but then my switch is going to go right here, so I actually want it right there, and you can see it is in that hole right there, okay, now, um, we need to change the value of this to 270 ohms. Okay, and we're going to bring in our momentary switch and it's going to be connected like such. Okay, I'll go like that. Now, uh, if we look at the momentary switch, terminal 1B and terminal 1A, they're actually connected internally on the switch. And terminal 2B and 2A are connected internally on the switch. And when I press this button, I will uh, connect terminals 1 with terminal 2. Okay, so I can go in or out on the left or right. It doesn't really matter, but generally we go in to the left with the ground, out on the right with the positive. We go in on the bottom and go out on the top, but again it will work in uh, other other ways so this uh, switch now only needs to be connected down to v plus in order to work and that is our circuit right there now we don't need to build the entire circuit because this is a parallel circuit which means this little uh, series portion of the parallel circuit will work on its own so I'm going to just test it to make sure that we've actually got a functional circuit. So we'll go up to the top, we'll press start simulation, and when I press the momentary switch, it should not light up the LED until I turn on our power switch. And now when I press the momentary switch, you can see it comes on and it gives us a little warning right there saying, hey, your resistor value is too low. Now, um, if we wanted to 
follow the rules right here. You can see it's saying um, I've got a current going in at 23.1 milliamps and they recommend a maximum of 20. Um, so in order to drop down below that, we would just have to do another Ohm's law um, calculation. So I'm going to stop the simulation. The next resistor up in this package would be 330 ohms. And we can try it with that and press the button. Hey, they're happy. All right, that sounds good. Okay, now we just need to calculate the resistor value for the orange LED and the green LED and essentially build three more circuits identical to that just changing the color of the LED. So I will put those together and come back. All right, so I have finished uh, the calculations for the resistor values and I have built the circuit according to the schematic diagram. And you can see right here, uh, these, this one is the calculation for the orange uh, diode, which is nine minus a forward voltage drop of 2.0 divided by 30 milliamps. Uh, returns a value of 233 ohms. Uh, the next resistor up to put us into the safe zone would be 270R. Um, so that is the one that I selected. And beside that right here is the calculation for the green LED, which is uh, subtracting a 3.5 voltage drop. And that works out to 183 ohms, which is very close to uh, the resistor value that we have of 180R, but again, to be safe, I'm going to bring that up to 220 ohms. And that's what I have put into the circuit right here. And now as I run the simulation, remember that this first one on the red LED, we uh, bumped that up to 330 ohms to keep this safe. Now. Uh, the next one right here, again, it's probably going to come up with an error, so I can go in there and just change that to 330 uh, in order to be safe, and yay, it's happy. Okay, and on the third one, um, we bumped it up to 220 ohms, and yes, of course, they're not happy. Now, what if I brought up that up to 270 Will that make them happy? No, I don't think they're really calculating in proper voltage drops based on the color of the LED. They're just doing a uh, standard um, voltage drop of probably using two or something like that. Okay, so uh, just to make them happy, we'll change this to 330. But again, on our circuit, uh, although that would still work, uh, changing that would not be necessary. Okay, so now we try it out, yeah, 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 and I should be able to turn off the switch, and no, no, no. And there we have it, our completed uh, breadboard circuit, adding in switches and a protection diode, the 1N4007. Hope this helps.